welcome back to Ostrich Investing. So ZCL announced that it is to be acquired for $10 per share. This video is going to run through the specifics of the deal, revisit our initial bull, base, and bear case scenarios from the video in August of 2018, and compare, compare what we thought back then with what actually happened. So why don't we kick it off and we'll jump into a little snippet of the press release here. Uh, so here's the announcement that came out uh, late Sunday night, uh, just a little over a day ago. Cash offer of $10 per share with no financing condition. Um, and they're saying that provides certainty of value. So ZCL Composites is to be acquired by Shawcore Limited, which is a fairly large energy services uh, pipeline services business uh, based in, in Canada. Premium of 46% to the 20-day VWAP or volume weighted average trading price of ZCL's common shares. So in this case, if we when we look at the share price chart, you can see that the share price start to creep up over the last 20 days. Not sure if anything leaked into the market, but uh, when they talk about the premium, they uh, they use a premium that's based on the 20-day volume weighted average trading price of 46%. So a pretty nice premium by all intents and purposes. Uh, and of course, a little bit of marketing here, highly favorable outcome for the shareholders. I mean, it depends on where you bought in. Um, and they refer back to the strategic review uh, options that were disclosed in May of 2018. And the transaction value, enterprise value of 312 million, which is about 12 and a half times trailing 12 months EBITDA through September, September 30th. Um, and that's pretty much the release. Uh, the board has uh, has uh, recommended that shareholders vote in favor of the transaction and the meeting should take place late March. So if we move forward here and look at the share price chart. So it's interesting here. This is the five year chart. And if you look back, August of 2018 is when we did our initial sort of analysis video on ZCL and the share price shares were trading a little bit under $8 a share back then. Then after they released Q3 results, which were, were disappointing results, um, we released another quick sort of Q3 update video. Shares got as low, they, they were under six bucks. They were under $6 a share back at that time frame. And then just a short two months later, uh, you can see the share price obviously pop today uh, on the news. Nine dollars and ninety-one cents, the most recent trading price, and obviously the the offer is for ten dollars a share. So that's the uh, that's the share price. And you know when we when we go back and think about the analysis that we did before, one of the things that we brought up in our initial video was this Q1 2018 conference call Q and A between uh, one of the equity research analysts and the former CEO, Ron Bachmeyer. And uh, credit to Seeking Alpha here for the source of these uh, transcripts. But when they announced the strategic review uh, completed without a transaction, you know, Ben asked on the call uh, pointedly, so ultimately, what was the reason for not finding a buyer? And as he dove into it a little bit further, so you found interested buyers, you just couldn't get the price you wanted. And Ron uh, uh, followed with, we had lengthy and involved discussions with a number of both strategic and financial buyers, obviously Shawcore being a strategic buyer. Uh, and Ben came back with, and you couldn't get the price you wanted. And, and Ron finally conceded and said, that's ultimately, again, when it comes down to valuation. You think your company is worth X, somebody's willing to pay you Y, and sometimes you can't reach a meeting in the minds or a meeting of the minds is probably what he said. So if we just go back to the share price for a second, we have to realize that the strategic review was happening while the share price was in and around this range, call it the $12 range, even a little bit higher. And so this may have been a very difficult price to uh, find a willing buyer who was willing to pay a premium on top of the then $12 a share to transact. And it's something that we talked about again in our video in August is that maybe with the share prices back down below $8 a share, there'd be an opportunity to revisit those conversations. Now, <laughs> that happened a lot faster than I probably uh, would have predicted, but interesting interesting to note nonetheless. 
So that's from the Q1 2018 conference call. And let's just go back and take a quick look at our previous analysis of, of ZCL. Revisit the strengths, the risks, and the key drivers very quickly, obviously. Um, this is a business that was, had a strong balance sheet, no debt, attractive return on equity, 17% in 2017, a market leader in their space with a pretty long-term track record. Some of the risks that we identified, new CEO, obviously the new CEO didn't get very long uh, uh, to prove himself or operate the business, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But we didn't really get to see any of the management transition risk play out because it, it uh, just not enough time was allowed. We talked about the replacement cycle for fuel, fuel storage tanks and whether we're in the late innings. Again, didn't really get to see that play out or not. Uh, we did talk about the risk of a profitability dip in 2018. And when we saw the Q3 results come out, that was definitely proven out that 2018 was going to be a much softer year than 2017. And then some of the key drivers is whether they could grow beyond their niche, um, water treatment traction. And we talked about a private equity backstop. And I think we, we omitted uh, a strategic buyer here, but we talked about it on the next page in our bull basin bear case scenario. And uh, that, that's an interesting discussion. So if we just jump forward, here was the bull basin bear case scenarios that we laid out. The bull case a sale of the company to a private equity or strategic is obviously the scenario that, that ended up playing out here just not even six months after our initial video. So I don't think we could have predicted a transaction would would have happened this quickly. Um, interesting to note that we we talked about a 10 times EBITDA multiple on 35 million of EBITDA, which would work to a share price of about 1150. What happened here is uh, there's about a 12 and a half multiple on EBITDA of a more depressed EBITDA, call it 25 million, given the fact that, excuse me, that 2018 was not shaping up to be a great year. And that triangulates into a share price of, of 10 bucks a share. But on the bull side, that's that's obviously the scenario that, that played out here. What's What's interesting is that the bear case in the few months between our initial video and and the transaction announced today, it was really the bear case that was starting to play out, at least in terms of the EBITDA that the business was producing. And we'll show that on the next slide as the, the company reviews their um, their EBITDA. But EBITDA for 2018 year to date was tracking well below the previous years. And it, revenue was sort of holding steady. I wouldn't call it declining. So what not a full on bear scenario, but Post the release of the Q3 results, the share price got down, uh, got down a little bit below six dollars, and so again, not quite down to what we had sort of highlighted as a five dollar uh, implied share price on the bear side, but but getting there, and, and maybe yeah, right now why don't we just fast forward here to their latest investor presentation, which again just shows 2016 EBITDA of close to 33 million, 31 million in 2017, and drop off down to about 25 uh, over the, the last 12 months and it's September 30th. So we you know, don't know exactly where where the business would have come in for the full 2018 year, but safe to say that it would have been meaningfully weaker than the previous previous years. So if we go back here, interesting to see sort of the two, the bull and the bear case scenario play out to some degree, but ultimately um, the concept of the sale of the company to a private equity or strategic buyer, uh, nice premium being paid here. Again, uh, we were a little bit conservative, I guess, on our multiple, but but in reality, I think the multiple paid the 12 and a half times EBITDA was probably an inflated multiple based on the fact that 2018 um, is a bit of a depressed year from an EBITDA perspective. So pretty close on the implied implied share prices. Last thing, I think, you know, one of the things that really surprised me here is just the timing. If you look uh, on their press releases, we can see that uh, Ted Redman was appointed the new CEO just in October 22nd of 2018. So call it uh, three months ago. And in under three months, they've they've transacted and agreed to sell themselves to Shawcore. So, you know, if I were to think about it, this 
this is an outcome that I saw as a possibility, but I would have expected that the new CEO would have had much more of an opportunity to operate and execute um, against his strategic vision for the business. And I thought that uh, maybe the sale of the company would happen much later, maybe a year out per se, if, if things weren't working and results were still stagnating. But obviously, I think you can sort of see from the premium offered by, by Shockcore that this was a deal that they felt that, uh, that they needed to make. And, you know, overall, I think it's a fair outcome for shareholders. Obviously, it fully depends on, you know, if you're an owner of the stock, what share price you bought in at. Um, you do get a premium multiple after what was shaping up to be a challenging year for ZCL, or at least lower EBITDA than previous years. Love to hear your take. You know, what do you think of the deal? And how about it from Shawcore's perspective? Maybe that's something that... Uh, that we might look at in a future video. Do you think this is a good acquisition for their business? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for, for this video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, don't bury your head in the sand.